Hello, welcome back to Paragon Ridge Ranch. Chrissy here, and today we are going to be talking about how do you clean your GQF 1502 Sportsman Incubator? I've had mine for a few years now, and I'm embarrassed to say I've never actually done a hard cleaning. Yes, I vacuumed it out. Yes, I wipe it off with some bleach wipes, but besides that, it doesn't really get that dirty. Um, but it's been quite a while since I've done that, so I wanted to take you along with me and let me show you how I clean it. I do go off the manufacturer's instructions, but I do not use a soft mild soap. I do use the pre-made antibacterial wipes. Let's get started. It's fishing nets everywhere. So first, I'm gonna actually use a vacuum and I'm going to clean up around the outside and on the top. You see how dusty the top gets? Let's get started. Now is where the fun starts. We're gonna open it up and we are gonna vacuum out the inside. Just three little latches, you open it up and as you can see, it's pretty dusty in here. That's pretty gross. And what that is, is that's dander and dust from the chicks. So when you put the chicks in your draw underneath, then as they dry, the heat in the air blows them, kind of like wind, blows them off and then their dander and everything goes everywhere. This is the top shelf and this is the humidity tray. What most people do is they put the humidity wick pads in here. They look like this. As you can see, I've never used one because I do dry hatches. If you haven't seen my video about dry hatch, I'll put it right here and you can watch it later after this video. This is the wick tray and the humidity pan. And back here, that's scarce too, just from sitting in there. Back here is the heater and the fan assembly. And then you start going down. So these are called a front bar support is what this is called. This right here is a door gasket. As you can see, it's just squishy, kind of like your garage door. It's just a seal and you go all the way down and right here this is an actual tray this is a tray that i bought separately but i do like to put it in here um, if i need an extra area to separate some chicks from the bottom brooder and then this is called the hatching tray the door as you see it has a clear window and it has three hinges that you hinge so we are going to clean this up today let's start by taking out anything extra that's in here so i'm going to take out my hatching tray which I know it's gross and it's embarrassing, but I always put down a clean towel in here. And then when I'm done with the hatch, I just get the towel out, get the babies out, and then put down a fresh towel. So that needs clean. And then this extra little tray. We're gonna take that out also. So look at this. See how it's dirty and it needs cleaned? Let's start with the vacuum. Got it all vacuumed out. I vacuumed out each level, each tray, the bottom, and also the door and the seal. Good little vacuum so it doesn't all get stuck on the wipes. So I wanted to explain to you what wipes I'm using. These are um, Bactiv. These are antibacterial wipes. You can use bleach wipes. Also use a, a very mild detergent and you can use a wet sponge or a rag and you can actually clean this out. I wouldn't get it too wet because this is particle board and I would never ever want to sacrifice the dexterity or how expensive this really is. So I'm just going to use pre-moistened antibacterial wipes and I'm going to clean out the whole inside. see things like this that is from a cracked egg or an exploded egg that was on these turners that somehow leaked had a crack died so I'm trying to get off some old cracked cooked on egg So 
So one thing I'm learning is my arms are not long enough. So I'm gonna do the best I can and then I might have to get Jeremy to help me on the back. But I'm gonna try. I noticed there's lots of fly poop in here and I didn't, I've never had problems with flies. So it must be after I turn this off and I let it sit here, they must get into these holes on the sides. See my finger? These ventilation holes, well, like that. I do see some on the side here too. So all these little spots down here are fly droppings. Now for the messy bottom. This is not gonna be fun. This is gonna be the first part. sweating to death. I'm in the garage and it's hot and I'm in weird angles trying to clean this thing, but it's really gonna be worth it. Okay, I am done cleaning the inside of the GQF. Look at this. Like I, it's hot in the garage. I mean, it's not as hot as it is outside, but just exerting yourself and, and doing things in here. So let's take a look. I still gotta finish the outside. I still have some really hard to get fly spots. Fly spots stink. I remember when we had a boat in a dock once. It took so much to get the fly spots off. I actually had to use magic erasers. So much better, doesn't it? I even cleaned the whole door. So now we can close it and clean this outside door. Look how filthy that is. That's more, oh, look, there's a fly right there. Fly spots. It's amazing what a little bit of elbow grease will do. Look, it's all clean. Now we just have this side, see the side? done cleaning the GQ. It is all clean, nice and clean, nice and clean. Except that spot right there. Probably for my hands. Yep. Just for my hands. Okay, I'm going to take the brooder tray and I'm actually going to wash it out in the dog wash. Now it's time for the humidity tray that is disgusting. I'm gonna let this sit. I'm gonna scrub it and then I'm gonna put it in the dishwasher because I don't use it. And it sits up there and it collects the moisture from the air and then all the fuzzies end up circulating and then depositing in it. So I truly don't even use it in there. So I was just thinking about that. I'm gonna leave that. Now, this is what we're left with a nice clean incubator. So the next question is, what else do we do now? We've got this beautiful, nice 1502 incubator. I say let's put some eggs in it. Let's throw in a little dry hatch. It's the middle of July. It'll be okay, it's nice and warm out. Why not hatch early? Let's do it. First thing we need to do is turn this on. So let's close it up. So right now, it just turned on. It's 
telling us that my set temperature is 100.0, 89.4.5. Okay, so it's going up. And the humidity is 64. So we're gonna let this warm up for a while. Go get some hatching eggs. Let's go get them. gen pop poop so this is going to be all of the mixed eggs the only rooster out here is steve and he's a marin oh and we have a birdie in here hi how many eggs are you under how many do you have okay you got a lot all right i'll go to the next one i'll take these eggs how about you are you birdie too? Huh? I knew there was two little black birdies that keep bouncing back and forth. How many eggs do you have? You've got a lot of eggs, honey. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take these away and just put them all in the incubator, not knowing what stage they're at, okay? Same with you. We just don't know. I'm just gonna gather all the eggs. I know I've had two broodies, but they keep going back and forth to different brooder boxes. So at this point, I don't know what's being needed, what was just laid. So I'm just gonna take them all and put them all in the incubator. Hey, you're going on the fly with this one. Okay, we just gathered the eggs. Let's check. So the humidity is 45 degrees. And it is at 100 degrees set temperature and it's at 100.1 inside. So we are ready to put in our eggs. Okay, everybody, now it's time to put these eggs. Now, some of these eggs have had broody hands on them and some of them are freshly laid. So I'm just gonna take the chance. I'm gonna put them in. They are gonna hatch at different rates, but I do wanna tell you, I am practicing and only do dry hatches on chicken eggs. If you've never seen my video on it before, I'm gonna put it right here up in the corner. Go ahead and click on it when this video is over. You will learn a lot. And I've had so many YouTube viewers that have reached out to me and asked me questions. And I wanna encourage you to do so the same. Comment below if you have any questions about dry hatches or any questions about the GQF 1502 Sportsman Incubator. It is a game changer. I've had this for probably four to five years now, but I'm not gonna talk too much about a dry hatch. I will tell you that it means dry. It means I do not put water in it. It maintains a 35% kind of average as far as humidity goes. I don't check and candle my eggs all the time. I don't check the humidity all the time. It's automatic. It stays at 100.0 all the way up to 100.0. Point two. That's it. Put them in for 21 days. They generally hatch at about 18 days, so let's get these in. Take our first load of eggs. And then we will get the second tray. Close the door. And then we just secure it with these three latches. And that is it. That is it for 21 days. There we go. I just taught you how to clean and disinfect the GQF incubator and how to start a dry hatch. If you have any questions, like I said, comment below. I'll be happy to get back with you. I do my best to try to answer every single message or every single comment that I get. I encourage you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you like my content, because I do constantly talk about hatching, incubating chickens, goats, donkeys, turkeys, all that good homesteading stuff. So if you can, or if you'd like to, please hit the subscribe button and hit the little dingle bell so you're alerted every single time I upload new videos. Hope you have a great night. Bye-bye.